Yes, hello, good evening, and welcome. It's Monday, it's Monday. Again? It's Monday, there's an echo in here. It's, mo it's Monday, it is, it's Monday. <laughs> God. What? Eh? 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 Yes, hello, good evening, welcome. Bit of a change round in the studio tonight. The, the cat house is now humongous. It's big and huge over there, look. She's sitting there with the uh, the Chesney Hawks hat tonight. Chesney Hawks. She is the one and only. You can't take that away from her. <laughs> Watch, yes. it, watch, watch that be a Brian Adams song. <laughs> no doubt, chat will tell us. Yes. Um, yes. How are you doing, Chris? I'm canny. How's your sir? Well, I'm, I'm getting there. I had a meeting with my financial uh, advisor this afternoon and I'm shell-shocked. Mm. Oh, that would be interesting. Well, when they, brought the, never good. when they brought the new rules in with the pension, meaning that effectively you've now got a building society account with the government-ish. For your pensions you see and i thought oh lovely mac pro <laughs> come on come and talk to me yeah all these changes in the uh, in the budget yes good. Like, oh god yes Without very good yes they've listened because I, I i rang george osborne up specifically and i says hey hell young those got my money and i want the bugger out he says leave it with me david we'll sort it all out for you dear boy dear very away to the budget nice surprise and lo and behold there it was that would be a stimulating experience not so really no. George Osborne. no 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 well let's not get political about no. it no not at all not at all yes we're gonna we're here we're gonna talk about e6 tonight really we are well, aren't we chris wasn't, are we wasn't expecting that well there's a possibility anyway were you chris no no well. not remotely <laughs> so, so that stuff we teed up earlier on is not happening now, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Tonight, 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 tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about meeting MPs because Chris and Sav and I, and we have all four of us, one of whom is not here, but the three of us and Sav. Anyway, moving on. Um, we're also going to be taking a little bit of a look at Clearos, and since I typed in and said to Sav, we're going to look at clay rows. I've decided we're also going to take a look at tanks because did you know that a tank isn't an e-cig? Did you know that? No. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. A tank is not an e-cig and I'll tell you how we know. And then I've had a number of enquiries from people saying, what the hell is that? That you can see on your screen there now and it, it is it's what's known in the trade as a double barreled silver bullet and it's going to be a little bit of a blast from the past and we're going to talk a little bit about that um, but only a little bit because it would just be a tease because you can't buy them anymore and that will be right after the titles now let's see if we can get this timed right tonight shall we right because this is one two three the, the his hour. His hour. and you know what i've done what? I've got VT talk open and not the ears hour. <laughs> <laughs> so we go bum da 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 da. <laughs> no, oh, hang on, watch this. I'm not going to have bum da da da. If you want bum da da da, would I <coughs> no, stop no. you from having bum da da da? We can have bum da da da, no bother at all. Watch this. Where are they? There they are. Here's our files. Are you ready? Here's our titles. <laughs> you feel what such you a... doing? I'm putting the titles up. Here they go, the old ones. There we are. 
Sorry about that. that. I don't know why it decided it was going to try and play itself again, but it did. That, that was that was a blast from the past. That was the old VT. To, uh, no, that was the old here's a, You see what happens when you get a visit from your financial advisor? What is it in your glass? Is it a cider? Oh, right. It's medicinal cider. Medicinal <laughs> cider. This one. Yes. Well, my cousin told us it was. Your cousin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She used to go blackberry picking. Uh, right. And, and you know, she would be there with the rest of the students from her university. She always used to go blackberry picking every October. And apparently every time she got a prick in her hand, she put it inside her. So it's medicinal, obviously cures it. God. We asked for that, Chris. Absolutely. Or I did. Fair enough. Anyway, yes. <coughs> Thought we'd blast off with this MPs thing, because you've had a letter from your MP, haven't you, Chris? Yeah, well, I've had quite a few, um, but yes, I got one today with regards to a visit we made, was it last week? Week before. week before, week before, yeah. Yeah, so it's um, just a couple of lines, um, thanking, thanking us for coming to see him last week. Um, as we discussed, I've written to the Secretary of State for Health, Right Honourable Jeremy Hunt, MP, on your behalf. My God, you said I it right. I shall write to you. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I shall write to you once again I, when I receive his response. Yours sincerely, Alan Campbell, MP. And he's, Labour. he's a nice lad, isn't he, that Alan? He's a lovely lad. So He's a lovely lad. It's probably as well to let people know what it was he said while we were there. I think so. I think so, don't you? Yeah, go for it. Tell the story. Well, I mean, I wasn't too hopeful um, because I have a previous letter here from Alan Campbell when I'd done, you know, what everybody else did and wrote to their MP. Um, I received a very, very long letter. Oh, my God. One page, two pages. Pretty hell. Yeah. Three pages. Goes on and on. Four pages. Five pages, to be exact. My good God almighty. Look at all that lot. I will. Does it, is there any sense Five in it? Five pages. Um, basically, if... <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading chat. <laughs> no. <laughs> but when it's signed, Deborah Arnott, Who? Chief Executive Ash, and Professor John Britton, I didn't really think there was much point reading it. No. But so, I, I thought you, you um, said it was your MP that you'd written Sorry? To, I thought you said it was your MP you'd written to. It was. And what he did was the same thing that a lot of people had done. He basically sent me a copy of the information that they had been given. Right. And we've seen a lot of people have posted exactly the same stuff. Um, there are quotes from Anna Subri. Yeah. We've all seen this so many times before, you know. And it's um, Envy Committee Amendment on e-cigarettes. And that's what he sent me. And that's what a lot of people have had sent to them as well. So I didn't have a lot of hope that um, Alan Campbell would be very receptive to our cause, you know, but I thought, well, let's give it one more shot, but this time, actually go and see him. Now, not many of you know, but I am agoraphobic, I don't go out unless I absolutely have to, and if I do, I take as many people that I trust with me, so I brought Sav along, and I brought, asked Dave if he'd come along with me as well. I was the muscle. <laughs> Quite. And um, off we went. And I was surprised. And it was, it was quite a long visit. But what I liked about it is he put, he played a devil's advocate, shall we say. But not in a negative way, in the sort of way, 
you know, if you're watching, um, I think it's Silk that's on at the moment, when you see how barristers work <sighs> and how you are prepared when you go into a court of law for what you're going to hear. And that's what Alan did. And it gave us all the opportunity to give our side of things um, without being patronised. You know, we were going to get good answers, and that's what we got, didn't we, Dave? Well, yes. I mean, um, he did keep saying every so often, one of the things he did say was, Look, I don't agree with what you've just said, but I can understand how many would, and therefore I shall put that point to the minister. And I thought, hello, this is a bit a bit good. And he, he as, as Kat says, he brought up a few, uh, a few choice examples that were rebuttable. Um, we talked about harm, con harm, harm con tobacco control, harm reduction, risk reduction, booze, sugar, e-cigs, sugar, e-cigs, e-cigs, harm reduction, tobacco control, and then he was writing notes copiously, was he not? He certainly was, as was his assistant. Yes, Paula. Yes, yes. She's, uh, she's a smoker. I seem to have frozen. Have you? No, I've got you. You're fine, hang you? Right, OK. No, Sorry you... about the phone ringing at uh, the wrong moment. It always happens. It does. No, you're still moving, hang you, Chris? Yes, oh. I, 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 I must admit, I do have a certain amount of um, sympathy for his poor assistant, who let it slip that she was a smoker, and unfortunately the e-cig that she picked up to try was mine. That might have been a mistake. Really? Back to you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, for me it was it was interesting because I didn't know that he was involved with the drug side of things um, formally, you know. Um, so he had quite an extensive knowledge on that. And things that we thought would come under the banner of drugs didn't. No. Which again amazed me. So what was he? A pharmacist or something? No, uh, no. He no, he was, he was an MP. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I meant in his <laughs> former life. No, he worked <clears throat> under the drug administration section or something or other, wasn't it, Dave? He was drugs oh. minister under um, Tony That's Blair. That's right. Drugs minister under, uh, not the Tsar, but he was the minister in oh, charge right. of drugs minister under Tony Blair. Yeah, yeah. He didn't have any so stocks in the office. So his knowledge was vast. Right. And he kept throwing arguments at us. Um, but the one that, that um, made me giggle, I said to him, please don't throw the gateway of a kid's thing and he went oh that's rubbish anyway <laughs> and that pleased me so much when he said that I thought well, we're talking to a guy who knows his stuff here indeed I mean he was he was again to give me his due he was a little bit surprised at uh, some of the devices that we had and he was yes. even more surprised that there was no cigar likes as I recall mm -hmm. and it was kind of he was expecting cigar likes and didn't see them which was good. Mind you, he did say that caffeine's not a drug. Yeah. I mean, we tried that argument and he said no. And we tried the one about how would you feel if you didn't have your, you know, a glass of wine with a meal. We did all that, didn't we? And uh, he said, yeah, but alcohol's not a drug. Yes. And it, it sort of knocked, in a way, it knocked our argument. But it was interesting to hear that, you know. Mm. But um, he was incredibly receptive and he listened. And although he didn't agree with everything, he said why he didn't agree. And he justified things from his side, which makes it easier for us on our side to get the criteria right to please them. And that was... Um, so, and well, what's the word I'm looking for? Not invigorating, but... Uplifting? Yes, that's the one. Well, I should he, have thought of that. At least the fact that he had some <coughs> background knowledge meant there could be a, a debate, a discussion, didn't it? Rather than, you know, you mentioned that it was quite a long meeting. Um, I mean, ours wasn't, was it? 
in a sense, the meeting we had um, with our MP. No, I think we, we, we probably were in about 20 minutes. Yes. There and how quickly the last 15's gone, we'd have been in about 20 minutes with ours. And I suppose we were in with Alan Campbell, what, half an hour, Chris? At least that. Right. Yeah. Between half an hour and 45 minutes, yeah. 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 It was, but the thing is, I think with, um, with Alan, he was on the fence was the feeling I got, that he was weighing things up. With our MP, Bridget, she was firmly in the, I support ESIG camp, I Yes, thought. yes. Um, which is all, it, it's all good, you know. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a good thing, really. Um, the, the whole well, coughing... That's why, I, that's why I felt it was um, like the barrister who would be preparing you for court. That's what it felt like. Right that exactly as Dave said, he wasn't sitting there being judgmental. His mind was not made up. He may have had preconceived ideas in the back of his mind. I accept that. But he was prepared to listen to what we had to say and, you know, question it as to why we believed what we did. Yes, yes. And I, I, I'm... that made it interesting. I'm going to pick up on some of the stuff that's coming out of chat. I, I, I've got my red hair pieces on, so I'm going to okay. do the sav bit. Um, they're saying that they're, they're picking up on this caffeine is not a drug and alcohol is not a drug. And I, I mean, obviously, Kat and Sav and myself all picked up on that. And he said, look, it's not a matter of where you're going. It's a matter of where you're coming from. And if you walk up to the man in the street that's got his Starbucks or Costa or other coffee shops are available in his hand and he's walking down the street if you were to stop him and say do you know you're using a drug you, you're probably as likely to get the coffee over the top of your head <laughs> because people just don't consider yeah. it to be a drug no. they don't no. see caffeine as being a drug likewise if you're out on the pot on a friday night who sees that as drug use and the reason they don't see it as drug use is because junkies are demonized yeah but junkies is just a word for people who use drugs. Yes. And of course, your normal man in the street, woman in the street, child in the street, dog in the street, doesn't want to be called a junkie because they're using caffeine, which is a drug, or alcohol, which is a drug, and a great many of them think exactly the same about nicotine. And it's just, that's just the way it is. So it's where you're coming from. And he's coming from the point of view, I think, that... I'm not a bloody drug user. I only drink 23 cups of coffee a day. I'm not a drug user. I'm not a junkie. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That'll have shaken the stream up. Well, I mean, the fact that tobacco is being demonised, alcohol is now being demonised, you wonder how long it'll be before caffeine is oh, in the all, same sort of way. They're, they're, they're already on it, Keith. They're already on caffeine. I mean, Chris and I were just talking the other day. The study's already been done to say... Yes. Caffeine's. Did you know it's the world's most used drug? Well, and of course you've got the sugar debate, haven't you? Well, that's a mass debate. It's yes. a load of wire. It's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Said that out loud, didn't I? <laughs> did, oh, I got her! I got her! You did. She's in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a new one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Quite. Yes, it's not an yes. individual question, it's a mass debate, it's a whole load of words, it's not very good. <laughs> yes, we'll move on. Shall move we? on, yeah. moving, moving quickly on, moving quickly on. Uh, it's just remi that's just reminded me, I, uh, I need to polish the silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs> no, sensible David, sensible, this is an adult programme, <laughs> but not in that the, sense. The one, to go back to Alan... Um, and he was Alan by the time we left, wasn't mm. he? What was so encouraging is he turned round and said, what do you want me to do? Yes. Yes. And it made us think, all of us, um, because you're so busy giving all these arguments, your mind isn't totally set on that bit. And it was lovely to hear the three of us come out with it. We want to be heard. 
As as one, and it wasn't even rehearsed, was it? No. We just no won't. because I didn't even think of it. My mind was not on that. It was putting the argument across, and we were all the same. And it was just the weirdest thing. There was this silence, and then all three of us came out with the same thing. The wording was slightly different amongst the three of us, but it was the same message. Yes. And he turned round and said, "You deserve to be heard. The experts." need to speak and be heard and that was the word he used the experts meaning the people who use e-cigarettes not the people who don't know the first thing about them exactly and that's the most encouraging thing i've that's heard quite profound isn't it really? i was yes. i have to admit um i was quite stunned i was quite stunned the fact that he and he said it in there wasn't with the, the usual caveats of, you know, with all due respect or any yes. of that no. rubbish. This was all, you are the experts, you know your way around this, you are the people that are using it, your voice should be heard. And that is as far away as you can get from what the official Labour line was for the EU. So no. did, did he give it any impression as how he could facilitate that? Yes. Go on, tell him, Chris. He basically was getting in touch with uh, Miss Ellison, was one person, and the other one was Jeffrey, be careful, Hunt. Jeremy. Jeremy Hunt. Yes. Well, I was half right. I mean, yeah, let, let's, let's, let's be honest, if, if, you had, if you had a Jeremy name... Jeremy Hunt. Yes, if you had yeah. a name like Jeremy Hunt, you would change it, wouldn't you? I would go for Clive. Clive Hunt. <laughs> or, in his case... Isaac, back to you, Chris. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Jeremy. Oh, God, no, I've lost it. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we scrape cut off the floor, we'll take some adverts. We'll be back in two minutes. How tactful. in Yorkshire for your ACP needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Yes, serious. We're back live. You all right now, Chris? I've calmed down a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of see for tears. <laughs> <laughs> there's no need to cry. I think, shall we leave that there just in case there's anything so. more wrong comes out of it? I think so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac well, and his I'll brother. Well, I'll let Mike. everybody know when uh, Isaac responds then. Excellent. That'll be great stuff. That'll be great stuff. Excellent. Um, yes, 
people were asking about about this. Uh, let's 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 go to that and kind of change the tune a little bit, and go to close the uppy cam, close the uppy cam. And there you go. It's a double barreled silver bullet, is what this is. Now, what people don't know is this very object is largely responsible for VaporTrails.tv. It certainly is. And what it is, is a silver bullet. It's just basically a battery tube, but it has, as you may absolutely be able to see, two 510 connectors. There they are. Two 510 connectors, one of which I have unscrewed the Atom Manubrilator from, and the other one of which I have not. And this was bought at the <coughs> very first ever vape meet <coughs> in the UK, which was held in York, organised by the one and only cat in the cat house um, in York at the York Brewery, where they had them. There was, there was, these were there, and I, I said I want one because at the time, an ordinary 510 atomizer didn't do it for me. Right. Yes. And this put two of them on, but you needed an unprotected battery if you used a, used a protected, pardon me, battery. As you may recall from last week's show, mm -hmm. you would only get two and a half amps out of it. And uh, two, two 1.8 ohm coils on there wanted rather more than two and a half amps to make it run, so it would just cut out. With an unprotected battery, however, and in this case it's got uh, a Panasonic uh, GCH 18650 safer chemistry battery in it. It works quite nicely. And to answer your question from earlier, yes, you could yeah. have different flavours in each one. Uh, uh, really, I meant that as a joke. And, uh, for, you know, can you get two flavours out of it? But you can. Yes. And this it must, be, it must have been before my time. I yes. don't recollect seeing this. How long before. ago was it, Chris? Oh, <coughs> you're talking April 2010, I believe. Is it as long ago as that? Mm -hmm. I thought it was March, not. March, April. Mm -hmm. Was it not 2000? And, no, it couldn't have been 2009. It was 2010, yes. 2010. 2010. And it's, funnily enough, when, when we were doing the show last night, um, I wandered past it because I've been stripping everything out and changing stuff around. And I, I came across a box of bits. And in the box of bits, I spied this. See, look. Do it the old fashioned way, hold it up the camera. Um, and I thought, oh, I wonder if I've got any 510 at the manoeuvre laters anywhere. Um, and there they were. But yes. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, Alvin. It's a long time since I've heard the at the manoeuvre laters. Well, <laughs> long long story short when i got this chris was sitting and somebody says what's it like now it, it, it might have been possible that by the time the question was asked i may have had some lubrication as you do <coughs> and somebody said there was what's it like i was his way oh young enough it's getting canny as else it's got two at the minute at, at, at the minute uh, uh, no, 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 and then there's two kettles on the top end, and if it puts, <laughs> the puts the liquid in the in the uh, uh, and then 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 and I don't think it can be repeated. Try. <laughs> <laughs> what she said was, what she said was, I dare you to do a review in, yes, in Durham Pitmatic Patois of the double barreled silver bullet. So I did. And I tell you, you were a star in the making uh, and I'd be your manager. Uh, Something like that. Anyway, um, the thing is, Andy Sutton saw it and he decided he wanted to do some two-handers, and thus was Vapor Trails born. So that yeah. is actually the cylindrical object that started Vapor Trails all those many, many moons ago. And it, what really surprises me is it still works. Do you want to have a go? Ah, yeah, it's I a little bit difficult you. to get in your mouth. I've said that to so many people. <laughs> <laughs> this will be fun. Will it? Oh, aye.
Good grief. It's the only bloke I know that can stealth a double barrel silver bullet. <coughs> oh, hang on. It's like a couple of mini organ pipes, isn't it? A bit like that, yes. I'm pleased you said it that way. Oh, yeah. God, can you see what's... Oh, hello, we've got Stan Schattenstein in. Um, mm -hmm. Schattenstein. Uh, yes, somebody nice said... that. It's all right, yes. Yeah. Well, it's a drip fest. What Hang have on. you got in it? Um, what I've got in it, because I knew this was coming up, I have some KY4 from Vermilion River at 1.5%. <coughs> Because I knew, I absolutely knew what was going to happen in chat. Because the spacing on these things, go to close up you come again. The spacing on those things, unfortunately, is exactly right for a full nose hit. And the daring me, I've got to. That's nice, that. Do you want to go now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's 15 milligram, and no, I would not have done it. <laughs> oh. Oh. So obviously you can't get those now. No, you can't <coughs> get a double barrel silver bullet now. You just can't. No, Sprotty, it's oh, KY4, not KY Jelly. Honestly. <laughs> Although KY Jelly is just thick A juice with no nicotine in, true to say. Lamental says, now it's Keith's turn. Keith said, no, no. Keith, Keith says, no. Check the computer, Keith says, no. There you go. <coughs> yes, John Not Matt's also cracked up. Yeah, there you go. No, it wasn't green on the exhale, <coughs> Kim Dabblestein Peterson. It just wasn't. And Cat looks <coughs> impressed. Are you impressed, Cat? I'm very impressed that your nose is not dripping VG. That's what happened the last day. <coughs> no so worry can, about. can you explain then? You say you could put two different juices in. Yes. How? Well, because it's two completely separate <coughs> atomizers. Hang on. Right. Let's let's see if I can get this on on, on the camera row four properly. <coughs> it's not going to be easy because the the DBSB, as Cat will attest, is a big bugger. Right. I'll take the, right, the like drippy tips out. Go to camera foo. Right, so there we <coughs> have KY foo. So we'll stick some KY4 because right, it wants right, to drip. One, right. two, three, four <coughs> drops in there. And then, what have I got? Well, that'll do. Caramel. You like caramel, don't you? Uh, yes. We'll put some caramel in the other four drops. One, Two, three, four. Right. Stick the trippy tips. Simple as that. Stick right. the drip tips back on, and we should now have a very caramelly KY4, which is quite caramelly to start with. But I haven't got, and this is. Oh, that's pleasant. Try right, that. You see, let's. I'm just. It's all right. I've cleaned the snots off. So you you. <laughs> You could, of course, just draw from one of them. Yeah, but you still burn both. Right. Yes, of course. Yes. 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 And you can lung on that very easily as well, of course. Isn't that interesting? Mm. You can taste the caramel coming through. Yeah. And as, as I suppose you could, uh, you could put some fire in one and ice in the other. No, mm. there's no bogies in the tube of the mouthpiece, Jester 2109. I blew me snout before we came online. So nobody's done one of these since, no. presumably. No, you just you can't get them anymore. They've gone, gone, never to be forgotten. Oh, actually, oh. sorry, there was a big, but never mind, doesn't matter. Uh, God. <laughs> yes, but but there you go. I mean, that's that's that that was a, a double-barreled silver bullet, which is uh, yes. I shall take it to the knees. <coughs> did you know about the knees, me, Keith? I did. Yes. yes. On the
Yeah, it needs meat. Yes. 5th of April, apparently. Right. New Crown Hotel, are you going? I might be able to. Yes. I know, I know I'm out in the evening, but... Uh, oh, well, it starts think... at 12. Yes. Lunchtime 12. 12. Not, not, the, not midnight. Not midnight no. 12, no, lunchtime no, 12. It but it'll go on till midnight 12. Do you think? Yeah. Is there many in chat coming? Well, we'll have to see. Um, see what they say. It's not a Halloween themed meet. I no. just fancied doing a video that was a bit different. Because she's like Sick that. Sick of all the Dixieland cheery ones, I wanted to do a spooky one. Spooky. She was mm. one woman with one <laughs> desire to take the most powerful e-cig on Can't. the face of the planet Can't and anyway. shove it up Linda McEvans' ass. Mm, sorry, where was I? Who interrupted <laughs> there? There's going to be, the, the I know of at least one 70 watt mod that's going to be there and it'll be available for purchase. Really? Yes. There might be a fight. I'm six foot two and twenty stone. <laughs> yes. Gillis is saying, will Kat's younger sister be back next week? I doubt it. Gillis, didn't come to knees, mate. Mate, you'll get flattened if Flat you do for making you'll comments be like that. Flattened. Flattened. Tell him, Kat. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him, Kat. Tell I him. I will bloody tell him. And I've got a memory. As everybody knows. I'm like an <laughs> elephant. I didn't forget. <clears throat> exactly right. Exactly right. Seventy. Uh, they've just picked up on the seventy watts. That just tells you how long the lag is. It's a Liang Lag, that's what it is. It's uh, Liang Lag. Li Liang Lag. You get Liang Lag and you're now here. There we go. Shall we uh, We talk about clearomizers and stuff like that? Because... Yes, some stuff for the beginners. Yes, it's all interesting. <coughs> and and, and, and I'm, I want to show you the similarities and the differentiations between the two. But first, this. Because I've just seen how long it is till the adverts. And it's not very long. Um no. You may have heard mention of a, a lady by the name of Bonnie Herzog. Bonnie Herzog is a, uh, an analyst, a market analyst at Wells Fargo. And they analyse the market. It's what market analysts do, apparently. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amazing stuff. They're really clever. Anyway, in her latest analysis of the e-cig market, he said, choosing his words very carefully so he could pronounce them, it would appear that she has drawn a distinction between these, which she calls e-cigs, and these, which she calls vapor tanks. Interesting. And she reckons that in the likes of convenience stores, corner shops as we would call them, jays as we call it here, although it isn't now because he's sold out somebody else. He hasn't. It's still got Jai. Hasn't. Taz at oh. the side. Oh, it's changed. It's blue now, not red. I know. Aye. But his name's still on it. Is it? Yes. Oh, but he's got a different name over the top. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> corner shops, right. <coughs> if you go into a corner shop, you're more likely to see one of them than you are to see one of these. And Bonnie has decided, she has analysed the market, because that's what market analysts do, and she says that it's quite possible that 60% of the electronic nicotine delivery system market is with what she's calling vapor tanks as opposed to what she's calling e-cigs. So here's the thing, that's an e-cig, that bugger isn't. That's a vapor tank, that's an e-cig. That's an e-cig, that's a vapor tank. That's an e-cig. That's a vapor tank. That's a vapor tank. That's an e-cig. All together now. That's an e-cig. That's, that's a vapor, a vapor tank. tank. That's a vapor tank. That's an e-cig. So, interesting that. So we're going to be talking, after the adverts, about vapor tanks, which apparently aren't e-cigs, according to Bonnie Herzog. And apparently, Bonnie Herzog is saying that if the big tobacco companies that have already bought into e-cigs, because that's an e-cig, that's a vapour tank, they need to be looking at getting out of e-cigs and into vapour tanks, because that's an e-cig and that's a vapour tank. Interesting, isn't it? 
<laughs> I mean, uh, what are you right, laughing I'll, at there? I'll come back to, to this afterwards. Uh, right. What are you laughing at, Chris? <clears throat> I'm just laughing at that's a vapour tank. <laughs> well, it is. You've got a vapour tank in your hand. I've got a vapour tank. Oh, got an e cig. Vapor, vapor Bob says, which was the e cig? That one. That's an e cig. That's a vapour tank. That's a vapour tank. That's an e cig. Enough. Advert. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, he said, looking at completely the wrong camera. We'll be back in a couple of ticks when we'll be talking about vapour tanks, not e cigs, because that's an e cig. Hello and welcome back to the Here's Hour on VaporTank.tv. Um, <laughs> it's nice to be here with you. <coughs> what was that you said about about market shares? Right, you said uh, this lady, uh, through her research, had discovered that sixty percent of the market's tanks. Yes, vapor tanks. Yes, without now, the U. Right. Yes. Given that the E Sigs are in, on sale in supermarkets, corner shops, Poundland, Pound World and all the rest of it. And 99 pence and, land. Yes. Where they charge 99 pence. Right, a penny mm. cheaper. Yeah. And these, by and large, I would assume, are only sold via the internet or in specialist e-cig vapour tank vapor shops. Vapour tank shops. I, I just can't reconcile where the 60% comes from. Well, the fact of the matter is, truth be told, when you think about it, the growth of the bricks and mortar store, the shop, yes. the vapour tank shop, is, is a very, it's a very, very recent phenomenon. Yes. It's only happened in the last, well, it's not many months, is it really? And now they're sprouting up all over the place. They are popping up like flies around a pile of, um, yes. yes, honey. <clears throat> yes. But, and, and the corner stores are handling e-cigs, rechargeable e-cigs and disposable e-cigs. <coughs> and, and funnily enough, a lot of the reasons that Bonnie Herzog came up with for why vapour tanks are likely to be more popular and why they are a threat to the tobacco companies, I hope the EU is listening, because this is important. <coughs> let's go to, let's, let us go, let us go to camera four let us go to cap <clears throat> close up the cam. Here we go. Right. Look. Standard. Get that out of the way, David, then people can see what you're doing. There is a fairly standard vapor tank. In this case, it's a 5 mil Vision Victory jobby. Right? But it's not alone. I mean, there's bazillions of them. There's, there's the vapor tank that I was showing earlier on, which just happens to be an iClear 16. iClear i16. Right. They all work on basically the same principle. There's a, um, uh, 
what's this one? It's a Vivinova, right? As a Vivinova, pretty similar. Um, and we've got a Pro Tank, right? These are all the same sort of thing. There's a what's that one? That's an Annie Vape David. I've only got one or two. There's um, an iClear 30, right? iClear 30. But the one thing you notice about all of these, in comparison to an e -cig, and in this case it's a, oh God, where can I go? There, in this case it's a vape. There's the tank. That's what holds the e-liquid on a vape. And the fact of the matter is, it's most unlikely to be refillable in any decent way. And you're limited by the size battery that it lives on, which is vanishingly small. In fact, the battery itself is not even as big as the tank on this particular vapor tank here, which is a CE5, iClear 16, sorry. And Bonnie Herzog said, in amongst all of this, that one of the big problems that the cigarette companies that are into e-cigs are going to have is that people can buy this juice. Yes. And they can get the juice and they can put it in their vapor tank. And she said that the marginal difference in profit is huge. Now, we know, for instance, that a disposable vape is going to cost you six pounds. If you go to the 99 pence store, as we saw last night, you can get something that Dave Kitson might be tempted by, but not very strongly, obviously, for 99 pence. Right? right. But the majority of the corner shop market, the kind of news agencies, the kind exactly. of markets that the big tobacco companies are looking at, <coughs> corner shops, they're looking at five, six quid for a disposable and what is it, 13 or 14 quid for a rechargeable with a single rechargeable battery. Bonnie pointed out that for what she thought was going to be around about a quarter of the price of smoking, you could use a vapor tank with loose juice and your monthly spend could be, bearing in mind that she's American, well under $20. Whereas the monthly spend for your average disposable user mm -hmm. would be closer to $200 a tenfold decrease and she said that the tobacco companies need to get involved that's just some of the reasons let's go back to camera 4 because all of these things are really quite similar and because they're all clear rows you can see where the similarity lies and I'm going to try and organize this a little bit better I'm sorry I'm making a complete hash of this because I've gone off piste as it were chime in anytime you feel like it Chris because I'm bound to forget things right I clear 30 and as you can see same. Yeah, it's got wicks right. on it it's what you're using yes. Keith got wicks on it they stick out they stick into the juice and oh god up oh, Chris is gone she's dipsy peered I'll try and bring her back that mine's loose if you want to use it David that's loose is it it's a top filler isn't it hello yeah. Chris hello don't know what happened there Call dropped. It's back now though. Yeah. Right, where was I? Yes. Now remind me, Keith, is this a bottom or a top fill? Sorry? Do you it's fill a top fill. Top fill, right. Okay. Couldn't remember that for a second. Right, so all you have to do is very, very simple. You take off the top or the bottom, depending on which one it is, pour your juice in, put the top back on, and bingo, bango, bongo, you're ready to go. If you were looking at refilling something like a vape, for instance, then you have to find a way of getting the little endy thing out. Because it's opaque, you can't see how much juice you're getting yes. in. I'll see if I can pull <coughs> that end bit out. I doubt I can, but I'll try. The things I do, eh? <coughs> All right, right, comes out easy enough. There you go, there's the wadding. So you would fill that up with juice of some description. But you wouldn't know how much to put in. You couldn't do it on the e-cig. You'd have to wait until it dripped out the bottom. I mean, we've been here in the past with uh, cartos, haven't we, Chris? Yes. Refilling them. And to be honest, it's a bit like herding cats. 
It's all very well if you can get it right, but what the hell is the point? Because you know nine times out of ten you're going to flood it or you'll not put enough in or whatever. So refilling a clay row, sorry, a vapour tank. Refilling a vapour tank, piece of cake, especially at the consumer end. I mean, here's a, a, a pro tank, Kanga pro tank, back camera fill, camera fill, there you go. Look, lift it off, drip the juice in. If the coil's gone buggered, then you just take the coil out and put a new one in or recoil it if you're into that. Piece of cake, bingo, bango, bongo, please don't take that the wrong way. And Robert is your father's brother and Fanny is your aunt, amongst many other things. So yes, the fact of the matter is, it does rather look as though vapour tanks with 60% of the market are taking away a lot of the 40% of the market that e-cigs have because the e-cig sales, the sell-through, is dropping in that direction whichever direction it is it's going down down that way down it's not going up vapor tank sales however are on the up now BAT is aware of this because they have via IntelliSig the XL Pro coming out which is effectively an Aspire I'm sure I had one here somewhere no I haven't well I haven't handy but it's an Aspire clay row on top of an Ego Twist style battery or a Vision Spinner style battery. Variable voltage, easy filling, and there you go. And at a reasonable price as well, actually, at 30, I think it's 39 quid for the kit, and that includes 10 mil, 10 mil of juice, 30 milligram juice, um, which isn't bad, which isn't bad at all. So, what do you make of this uh, this figure from, from Bonnie Herzog and Chris? What's, what does that make you pleased or what? exceptionally um come on how can you not be pleased i mean i'm delighted after all i've been hearing that i'm not using e6 <clears throat> i'm so pleased that i'm not likely to be breaking the law because i'm using a vapor tank <laughs> 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 so it's pleased me no end I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that we're going to get away with it just no. by changing the name. Yes, if but we're, when, to be you th when you think about it, they're not SIGs, are they? They're not SIGs. Well, I've had this conversation I don't know how many times. Mm. And the bottom line <clears throat> on it is, I'm not sure that cigarette as a term actually encompasses tobacco necessarily. No. I think it's mm. more to do with the shape <coughs> of the thing. And I would need to go further into the etymology of it all. But I'm pretty sure it's to do with shape and not to do with tobacco or anything like that. So shape-wise, it's probably right. But that said... I mean, it raises various legal questions as well, doesn't it? it there's, there's all kinds of, of... So what about... Do you remember the, the plastic tanks that preceded these that you used to buy in a packet? Mm-hmm. CE4s. Right. Would they, would they be regarded as a as a tank? A vapor tank, yes. Right. Yes. And basically, but anything that doesn't look like a tab, and it isn't tab sized, would be a vapor tank. So every last little thing on here would be a vapor tank. Every last one. These, mm. these wouldn't be classed as a vapor tank, I don't think, because there's no tank. Right. As such. And, and anyway, she probably, they, they probably have no idea what an atomizer is in the way that we used to use them on 510s and 901s and stuff mm. like that. Especially when you call them atomanubrilators or whatever. Atomanubrilator, that's right. I can see atomanubrilator. Mm -hmm. I just can't see atomanubrilator. Really, 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 really what, what mm -hmm. Chris mm -hmm. is implying is that in a way it's going to put the cat amongst the pigeons, isn't it? I don't know. No, you... because, I mean... <sighs> I've got a message here from Kim Dabelstein Peterson saying she isn't pleased. It gives them an incentive to lobby, to outlaw tanks. Well, there is that, but let's be honest here. If we had called them Dumble Watsits, Dumble right? Watsits. if they were called Dumble Watsits, they would have found a way to make that illegal it's it, at the end of the day it's got now to do with the name no it's to do with the fact they want them gone 
Yes. Whatever they're called. Exactly right. Because the fact of you the know? matter is, when, they, when, they, when they're actually debating all of this kind of stuff, whether it be a singular debate or a mass debate... Um, Don't. What? You start me giggling yeah, again. Well, they, they call them electronic nicotine delivery yeah. systems, ENDS. That's yeah. the official name for them in official circles, ENDS. So e-cig, vapor tank, it really doesn't make any difference. But in, what, what got me a little more um, fired up was the fact that most of the, the, the numerative research that's been done, i.e. finding out how many people are using e-cigs, has been finding out how many people are using e-cigs, not how yes. many people are using <coughs> vapor tanks. That's the important part to me. And if the numbers that they have for worldwide usage actually represent 40% of the actual usage because 60% of people are using vapor tanks as opposed to e-cigs. I'll keep it out. Point is putting it away because that's an e-cig, that's a vapor tank. 60%, 40%. Add the two together and suddenly you're looking at numbers that outstrip what the current estimates are. That's the point. And there's also the point that if 60% of electronic nicotine delivery systems users if 60 percent are using vapor tanks then there's a reason for that and the reason for that is they work better are more satisfying are more useful to the user this is good stuff i'm chuffed are you not yeah yeah uh, I, I think what I, what i was meaning was uh, when I said cat amongst the pigeons, the implications for the uh, the tobacco industry that are producing the e-cigs, and you saying they're going to have to get into the uh, into the tanks, aren't they? Well, they are, without a shadow of a doubt. If they want, if they want a decent share of the market, they're going to have to get into vapor tanks. And if they're going to get into vapor tanks, who are the best? people to talk to that would be the people that are using them yeah so there's a chance that we we may get to guide what's this dd i'm a little confused as to which is which i'm so sorry about that jolly roger let me explain that is an e-cig and that is a vapor tank that is a vapor tank that is an e-cig that is an e-cig, that is a vapor tank, and I'm here to tell you it's a bloody good and an all. <laughs> Get in, yes, just to avoid any confusion. Liana Lawless says e-cigs mostly used by smokers where they can't smoke. Yeah, do you know I'm not going to go there because in many respects I am still a smoker. I just don't like tobacco in order to address my nicotine habit because it is a habit not an addiction i want that one read into the minutes as well please um where are we e shisha is commonly referred to for non-nicotine containing devices which gets around ebay selling rules that's for monster and mike there you go so i i i assume vapor tank might well do the same thing i have the feeling we're going to be seeing a, near, a, a change in nomenclature you know I mean, yes or yes. Norman, nomenclature, as I yes. heard somebody say. Yes. Nomenclature. Change in the nomenclature. I've never met nomenclature. I haven't. No. 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 It's a, she, a, he must be a nice lad, though. He must be a nice lad. You're looking very thoughtful, Chris. What's going through your head? <laughs> I'm just looking at this, some of the things that chat's coming out. You can see they're all as confused as I am. What about which but is an e cig and which is a vapor tank? Yeah, it's amazing. You know? Can they not tell the difference? I'll try one more bloody time. <laughs> right, one more time, and I'm not doing it anymore, because if you can't get it from this, you'll never get it at all. That there is an e-cig, right? That is an e-cig. It is not a vapor tank. It is an e-cig. These are vapor tanks. All of these. These are all vapor tanks. That's what they are. Look at them. Aside from that, that's a pen. It's been dipped in shisha, so it's a shisha pen. These are all vapor tanks. Look, vapor tanks. Can you see 
the th great thing about a vapor tank is it looks bugger all like a cigarette because that's an e-cig and that does does that help <laughs> I think so. I think that's done the trick. Yes. There you go. We're here to help. Here to help. And we covered everything that we wanted to cover as well, and we've only overrun and by a minute. A minute, huh? Yeah, it's yes, pretty good. It is. Right. Well, that being the case, then, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for us to do is to bid you a fond farewell. But before we do, a quick reminder that now even now and i'm sure there'll be a link goes into chat right at this minute ry4 radio is giving it hot licks on ry4radio.com as it will be after every show this week and friday and saturday as well tomorrow night mark o van basten takes to the airwaves in glorious livid technicolor by virtue of 4g that's 4g that's all good no g that's good um Wednesday night, we have team talk, as per usual, for maybe the next week or two weeks, and then Tin Your Tip will be back. Thursday will be VT talk, Vapor Tank talk on Thursday night. And then on Sunday, Dave Kitson will be back with Dave's Tackle Box. Hey, it's been brilliant spending the last hour with my two mates here. Two mates. Cat and yes. Keith, Keith and Cat. Cat and okay. This is a Keith, that is a cat. That is a cat, this is a Keith. Right? God. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know the difference. <clears throat> Just so I'll point it out. So, until the next time we see you, thanks for joining us. Vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind your vapor tanks down. See you next time. Ta da! Good night. See you night, Chris. Good night. <laughs> Sponsors of the Haze Hour.